I've definitely talked about this a lot, but I really want to talk about it again, and this probably won't be the last time I talk about it at all. That's CW's Flash. Now, I really do love CW's Flash, like, you know, the earlier seasons, and I've said that probably a million times now, but I want to pinpoint when I truly fell in love with this TV show. Because, yes, don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved the pilot. I loved the first season, but where in the first season where I or was I like whoa this right here this is it this is the perfect seat or the perfect episode for me this right here is exactly what I've been looking for out of a CW shows the flash and I'm gonna be honest it has to be it has to be episode 15 known as out of time now this would trickle into episode 16 a little bit but i won't really go into episode 16 a ton but let's talk about what episode 15 truly brought to the table and why i enjoyed it so much for starters we are introduced to mark martin who is the actual weather wizard i think i talked about um clyde martin being quote unquote the weather wizard um if i did my fault he's not actually the weather weather wizard the true weather wizard is mark martin now we get intro into him where they're flying in the plane and they get struck down by well you know the particle accelerator they come crashing down and so on and that ha that is how mark martin basically um earns or gets his powers of weather control but later on we figured out or figure out that his weather control is so much greater than Clyde martin's weather control and it's kind of a cool little um nod to the idea that he is big brother he is protector and he is um or always has been a better criminal to a large extent than Clyde martin but with that said we dive into the present day and it's actually Barry and Linda going on a date. I forgot how much I absolutely loved these two. I was super, super, super crushing on Linda. I'm going to be honest. I had a fat crush on Linda when I was uh, when I was younger and watching the show. And when they went on a date or went on and started dating a little bit more, I was definitely crushing pretty hard on Linda just flat out. Now, this isn't or this isn't a big reason why I love this episode, but I felt like it needs to be talked about because they go on this date to a bowling alley and they meet up with Eddie and Iris. Now, this isn't on accident or this isn't on purpose, excuse me, this is on accident. But I'm going to be honest, it kind of feels odd that Iris would go here. Yes, don't get me wrong. I know that they went here as children and, you know, stuff like that. But why would she insist on coming here? It makes me kind of weary with that idea. And you have Eddie and Iris and Barry and Linda. And let's just say it gets awkward very quickly. And it's obvious that both Iris and Barry have some sort of chemistry or have some sort of thing there that they're not necessarily talking about. And they obviously got feelings for each other. And Eddie and Linda obviously can notice that specifically. And even Eddie just like doesn't even kiss her when he leaves. He just kind of goes, oh, I got to go and just leaves to a crime scene with Barry, which is wild by the way i mean you could tell eddie was seething during this time and linda on the other hand as well she was absolutely pissed and frankly i felt bad for my girl i'm not gonna cap i felt bad for her because she is one of my favorite um and she was for a long time my favorite love interest for barry but i think it's just because i had a such a big crush on her that you know i was clouded in terms of judgment because i'm not gonna lie she's not the best love interest for barry but i did have a massive massive like um bias towards her now let's get on to um after this and what's happening mark martin is currently trying to find joe west and when eddie and barry have a run to basically the crime scene um it's kind of an odd situation because when eddie and barry leave Barry, Barry more or less runs off to see a see himself in his suit next to him. It is kind of odd, but it's literally a mere version of himself. But he can't really think about that at the moment. But this is what we know as the first glimpse of what time travel is and what time travel has to come in this series. We then see them all together, being that of Joe, Barry, and Eddie. And they're actually listening to a recording of the brother of Clyde Martin, Mark Martin, and he's actually looking for Joe West. And they find out that, well, he knows exactly who killed his brother, and that's who exactly who he's hunting. Now, this is a scary, scary thing, 
because like I said, Mark Martin is the true weather wizard and we've seen or saw during this episode the power he is capable of doing. Being able to condense the weather and elements and that's what he truly is. He's more of like an elementalist than anything, being able to just condense and make these more potent um, different kind of substances being being used as like ice water and stuff like that i mean these are way more potent than his than his brother by a large margin and making him 10 times more scary now barry does later on talk to um harrison wells about this suspo supposed speed mirage or that's what harrison wells deems it as but he kind of dismisses the idea that barry has a weird connection with this other version of barry kind of blowing it off saying oh yeah like we'll we'll make sure to talk about it and figure it out once we're done with uh, mark martin but it's obvious this is the first time that Harrison is kind of feeling a little bit tense about Barry kind of learning things a little bit too quickly. Maybe even to the large degree of him realizing that time travel exists. And if he starts connecting the dots, things might go pretty bad and might go away for him, especially dealing with trying to get home, which is something we'll definitely talk about in a little bit. But you can tell Harrison Wells is a little bit iffy and he definitely was drawing insane suspicion throughout the entirety of this episode. Now, this was a pretty full circle thing because we all knew from the beginning that there was something wrong with Harrison Wells. But seeing the characters now finally realizing that there's something up with Harrison Wells and that there's little tiny tidbits that he's now giving away is kind of a wild thing. And you could dig even deeper by saying maybe he knew that they would slowly but surely be finding these things out and decided at this time to start kind of nodding off the clues, giving this, giving that, giving that. Because let's be honest, if Eobor Thawne didn't want to be caught, he would not be caught. So we know that he's a mastermind, so there's a good chance that he flat out got caught kind of on purpose, but also allowed them or allowed people to arise a little bit of suspicion um throughout this time now obviously this isn't a big part of it um until a little bit later but eddie um does eventually question iris about the relationship with barry that's the next scene we just see and it definitely makes me feel bad for eddie like extremely bad for eddie and it kind of just sums up the odd relationship between barry and iris because let's be honest um yes they are pseudo brother and sister i know they're not blood technically but they are pseudo brother and sister but if you spend that much time around somebody you're either going to be on the side of i'm never going to date you because i literally see you as my brother or on the other side of things where we spend so much time together that i'm in flat out love with you and that's the the line they are toting but in my opinion normally it's either wide left or wide right it's never like oh i'm gonna teeter back and forth on it and it's pretty obvious that iris has those reciprocating feelings for barry and the fact that eddie has to literally watch these things happen in motion is kind of a messed up idea and it gets even more messed up in the future but that's not something i'll talk about here um, about Eddie's, you know, horrible, horrible treatments, but maybe that's another video I'll talk about in the future. Now, this does lead to the first meeting with Mark Martin, and I'm not gonna lie, this has to be the best way to introduce um, the villain to the main cast. Now, they're just driving along, just driving normally in Central City, and they're talking about Mark Martin, they're talking about relationships, they're talking about this or that, and he's asking his stepfather about his stepfather's daughter and it, it's it's a whole thing but there he's asking about iris what he should do what he should um how should he approach it and um joe basically says hey you got to kind of let her um be her and kind of let her come to you and then you'll know right like that's the best course of action if you try to force it and you try to like oh i know you have feelings for me and you know you have this um it's gonna go all bad and we eventually see that happen which um i won't get into right now but maybe i'll reference it toward the end of this video but yeah we do see that happen a little bit but during this time it begins pouring down rain like pouring down rain and as it's pouring down rain joe references like wow it's really coming down blah 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 like this is kind of crazy and barry begins to flip the radio station and then eventually he hears something it says 
there's a sunny day or it's been a very beautiful sunny day in central city and both of them look at each other like they've been absolutely shot with a bullet like what do you mean it's been a sunny day they stop the car immediately turn around and they see one person mark martin i love the introduction to mark martin here especially to the main cast i thought it's absolutely amazing way of utilizing his powers and a very simple way and a very kind of like you know um very basic way i mean nobody would have realized oh it's just raining right and the fact that he flipped through the channels the radio channels and eventually um eventually heard oh it's a sunny day and that is bone chilling it's almost terrifying like the realization on their face and and mark martin would eventually send the lightning bolt coming down toward the car to basically explode it but luckily we all know Barry's extremely fast, so he grabs Joe, and they get the hell out of there, and luckily, they're able to survive. Now, this is where Joe is um, sidelined by the captain at the precinct, and he's told, like, hey, it is time for you to be sidelined. Like, you gotta stay away. Like, this, this is not working. Like, you're being hunted. Like, you cannot be out on the front lines. And Barry actually agrees with this, but Joe even tells him, like, like, look, we're the only people that truly know what these people are capable of. We are the only people that know here what, what capabilities these weather wizards truly have. And these other people that are in the precinct, they don't really know. They don't really know at all. So really, he needs to be out there on the front lines. He needs to be out there um, helping, um, helping up as or helping out as much as possible. But obviously they don't want him doing that but we know joe he goes against everything that is said so he ends up not doing that now they continue to kind of build up um to iris and barry's relationship i mean we continue to see that throughout this time especially with iris and barry just chatting and you know doing normal stuff like that but we continue to build up and this is the perfect buildup, in my opinion, because we are building up to the end of this episode. And it's a very, very well written episode, in my opinion. And maybe that's a um, uh, what's it called? Like a a not not a common opinion or maybe that's a hot take. Excuse me. But I honestly think this episode was super well written because if you want Iris and Barry to be endgame, this was a very good buildup in this episode to get you to that specifically. But obviously, their their relationship isn't um, the biggest thing of why I loved this episode. It truly has a lot to do with the suspicions on Harrison Wells as they come up. And they continue to arise more and more and more photos and different things like that that incriminates Harrison Wells um, being at certain places where people have died and so on and so forth. And it seems like they keep on stacking up more and more. Now... We do get um, Cisco trying to give Joe this this item or this use or trying to give Joe uh, this item to help him basically fight off the weather wizard. Now, um, during this time, Cisco actually enters the elevator to leave and he sees Mark Martin enter the precinct. It's as a, it's like perfect timing where they swap out. But luckily, he's able to contact Barry, um, who eventually shows up. And uses Cisco's tech to actually take down Mark Martin, or at least um, for now, take down Mark Martin, where he could subdue the weather that he creates. But unfortunately, the captain is hurt during the situation, and this is where Joe is then thrusted back into basically combat, or thrusted back into the front lines pretty quickly with uh, with him and also Eddie Thon. But obviously this is not the biggest thing in the world because we are we all we do have like multiple active storylines going on all at once and yes it does get a little bit cluttered but it's really really well done in my opinion we have the mark martin storyline where we're dealing with um with joe and barry and all these other people trying to stop mark martin but we're also also unraveling the mysteries of harrison wells and that's the biggest thing for me um, on top of, you know, the whole time travel aspect of this episode, which was beautifully done, in my opinion. Now, we do see Cisco studying the speed trap for the reverse flash. And Eddie and Joe hunt for Martin. But Joe gets captured and stuff like that. And he gets handcuffed to a boat. Now, that is a whole other thing. That's going to lead us to the final boss battle, quote-unquote. But the main thing that was super bone-chilling 
And the main thing that I saw and I was like, whoa, this is a different feeling. And rewatching this episode, I was like, I still feel chills go down my spine watching this episode. Caitlin is sitting there having coffee with Harrison Wells. She doesn't know just yet that that is the reverse flash, but she gets up, she grabs the coffee cups, she moves over to the counter, putting them down, and as she turns, guess who's not there anymore? Harrison Wells is gone. This immediately tells Caitlin that's the reverse flash. He is the person that they've been suspicious of. He is the person that killed Barry's mother. He has not been the same person for a very long time. That is That scene right there may seem simple, but it was a terrifying one. Imagine through the lens of Caitlin Snow, your boss that you've been working for for so long, you thought he was crippled. You thought he, he was hurt, but then everything starts clicking. He wasn't hurt. He wasn't anything. He truly was an evil monster this entire time. He was the reverse flash yeah it is a crazy thing to look at and this does lead to cisco meeting eobard thawne yes and i'm gonna be honest this this scene crushes my heart and i mean no pun intended okay maybe pun intended but it crushes my heart i mean at the end of the day we have cisco and eobard thawne standing in front of each other we know how cisco feels about harrison wells he is like a father figure he is like a mentor. He is everything to Cisco, and he's standing in front of him, and it's obvious he is not the person he once knew. And he would say his infamous words, in many ways, you have shown me what it's like to have a son. And he smashes his heart to pieces, killing Cisco. And it's a scary, scary thing because, let's be honest, Cisco even offers to help him, saying, oh, I'll help you get home, and we could do this, we could do that. No, but Thawne knows. You may be smart, but you're not smart enough. He knows that Cisco cannot help him get home, and, well, at the end of the day, he has to end up killing him, which is a sad, sad thing to see. And when you're watching this, you're like, whoa, 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 what is happening? What is happening? Like Everything is crumbling around you so fast. And I mean, at the end of the day, um, Eobard even says one of the coldest lines ever, man. He says, he, he literally says, forgive me, but to me, you've been dead for centuries, which ends up being a pretty constant thing he says, but it is one of the coldest lines ever, man. It's, it is pretty wild um, how fast paced and what happens during this episode, because we even get the climax to the, the Iris um, and Barry feelings where Iris reveals her feelings, Barry reveals his, and I'm gonna be honest, this is before Iris, in my opinion, became extremely annoying um, as a character and did all this extra stuff, but seeing them together and revealing their feelings, I'm not gonna lie, I, I felt bad for Linda, maybe when I'm older, like now, like rewatching it, I don't feel as bad, even though I still feel bad, but back when I was younger, I was like, nah, this is messed up, you're cheating on Linda, this is messed up, man. But now it's like, okay, whatever. Like, it's not as bad, but it's still bad. But they do reveal their feelings, and there's, like, a whole, like, nice thing there. They kiss, and then eventually he says, like, I'm sorry that it had to come to this, and I'm sorry that you had to learn like this. And then he becomes the Flash, right? Suits up, and then he tells her to go as he runs off to, to stop a giant tsunami that is heading toward them. And this is a beautiful scene, a beautiful one. I'm going to be honest. The music picks up. Barry runs back and forth as fast as possible. We see, we keep cutting between um, Iris, Joe, and Barry, seeing the boat, seeing the tidal wave, seeing the wind pushing up into, um, into the sky like a wall that is going to protect Central City. It cuts back to Iris. We're watching Iris in complete shock. It's not like they can run away from a tidal wave anyways. The music continues to pick up. Barry runs more and more and more. The wall comes up slowly but surely and Barry screams and then bam, he smashes through the time barrier and he walks through and as he's running, he's stumbling, right? And he looks to his side. There he is once again. That is no speed mirage. That right there is him time traveling. 
He saw it before it even occurred. He sees himself tra time traveling. And before, he saw the future version of himself when he did end up time traveling. It is a crazy scene and a, well, let's just say like a wild one at that. And at the end of the day, he looks around. Everything feels like it's, it's underneath this odd, thin layer of fog. It's as if everything around him feels like a dream. And then the episode ends. Boom. Title card. It is a beautiful thing. Oh, it is, it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I absolutely loved this episode. And this truly was when I fell in love with CW's The Flash. And there's many reasons for it. I love time travel. love the idea of it. And I think the way they executed it was a beautiful way to execute it. Now, let's talk about the episode that follows this. I won't talk about it too long because it's not really um, super important to my love and when I fell in love with the CW's Flash. But it is something to talk about. The next episode does start with him, you know, smashing through the time barrier and him showing up. But we do get a massive problem with time travel, right? He time traveled. He obviously did that. And he now knows what happens. So what does he do? Well, instead of doing everything exactly the same as it did before, well, he decides to throw Mark Martin in jail and so on. And it leads to a bunch of chaos absolute chaos and we obviously know why when you mess with time it kicks back and when you change one thing it changes so many different things and barry learns that the hard way which makes a beautiful episode for episode 16 i'm not gonna lie the next episode was a pretty good one as well and it does show the consequences of time travel even if they are accidental and not on purpose and that's a massive foreshadowing to what eventually happens in season two leading into season three where Barry goes back in time and saves his mother. I know it is wild. Um, and frankly, CW's Flash was pretty damn good, at least in the earlier seasons. And it makes me sad that they couldn't keep up that momentum. But this truly was when I fell in love with the C with CW's The Flash. And it was such a beautiful episode. And I would love to hear what you guys have to say. What do you guys have to? Th um, what do you guys think about um, CW's The Flash? Do you think episode um, 15 of season one was like a legendary episode? Maybe you have a different episode that you personally absolutely loved in season one, season two, or whatever season you could think of that made you really, really love CW's The Flash. And then obviously we all had our hearts crushed when you know it absolutely fell off a cliff and started sucking. But still, let's reminisce on the good times and not think about the horrible aftermath of what they made in terms of CW's The Flash. Now, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I am a comic casual, so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below. Make sure to show some love by leaving a like and subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video, um, YouTube believes that you'll enjoy this one, so you might as well go check it out. There's no harm in it.